All right, today's lesson is on inverse proportions. And as a quick refresher, before we start that, let's uh, remember what a direct proportion or just a regular proportion will look like in this example problem. It says, if John works for nine hours and makes $15, how much money will he make by working for 15 hours? Okay? And so to set up this proportion, uh, I told you when we first learned how to set up proportions that typically you want to put hours with hours, dollars with dollars. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll set it up here. Hours and hours are going to go together. Dollars and dollars are going to go together. Okay, so it says first he works for nine hours, so we'll go ahead and put that here. And he makes $15. Now, since the $15 goes with the nine hours, we've got to put those two across from each other. So there's nine hours. Here's our $15. Okay, how much money will he make? So we don't know how much money he's going to make. There's our variable by working for 15 hours. And here we go. We've set up our proportion. Now we just had to cross multiply to solve it. 15 times 15 would be our first step. That gives us 225. Then we would need to divide 225 by 9. And we see that he will make $25. X equals 25. So he'll make $25 by working for 15 hours. All right? That's how we would solve it. Hours with hours, dollars with dollars, cross multiply and solve. Okay? Now again, that was a regular proportion what we learned in the past. Today we're talking about uh, indirect proportions. Okay? And here's the difference. When we first did this video for direct proportions, I told you that you had to think of it, about it like this. So he works for 9 hours and makes $15. What I told you you had to do was think that if he works for more hours, is his money going to go up or is it going to go down? Obviously, if he works for more hours, the amount of money he makes is going to go up. So it was up and up together, so that made it a direct proportion. Or we said if things went down and down together, it was still a direct proportion. Okay? Well, an indirect proportion is just the opposite, or an inverse proportion. You can say either one. Okay? As one quantity, one number, as one number increases, the other one is going to decrease. So this time, if one thing goes up, the other one's going to have to go down. Or if the first one goes down, the second number is going to have to go up. That is how an inverse or indirect proportion works. So let's go ahead and look at an example of that. It says it takes four SMC 7th graders 30 minutes to wash 10 cars. How long would it take them if there are 12 instead of just four? Okay. Well, here's how you do uh, an inverse proportion. Here's how I recommend you do an inverse proportion. First, go ahead and set it up exactly like normal. Okay? So we've got 7th graders is going to stick with 7th graders on the same side of the proportion. All right, so first we've got four 7th graders. Uh, let me, I guess I'll put... And then we've got 12 7th graders. That's going to go on the same side. And then across from the four, it says if there's four of them, it takes 30 minutes. So across from the four, we're going to go ahead and put our 30 minutes. And we're trying to figure out how many minutes would it take if there's more kids working. Okay. So we've set it up totally like normal, but here's where we've got to ask ourselves. Is this a direct proportion, where they go up together or down together? Or is this an indirect proportion, where they're the opposite? Okay. And you've got to think to yourself. You just kind of have to use logic and think about it. Okay, there's a certain number of kids washing cars. If you have more kids washing the cars, should it take more time? Should it take longer for more kids to do it? Or would it take less time for more kids to do it? Well, as long as the kids aren't messing around, right, and they're actually focused on washing the cars, if you have more kids, it should take less time, right? So as one number goes up, the other one goes down, which means we have an inverse proportion here. The only thing you have to do to change it for an inverse proportion is you're going to take one side and just flip it. Okay, so we're going to take our 30 minutes over x minutes, 
and we're going to flip it and make it the opposite. We're going to make it x minutes over 30 minutes. Now that we've flipped it to make it an inverse proportion, we do exactly what we've always done. We cross multiply and solve. 30 times 4 is going to be 120. 120 divided by 12 is going to give us 10. So how many minutes would we expect it to take? 10 minutes for a group of 12 seventh graders. Okay? Again, first set up the proportion like normal. If it's inverse, all you have to do is flip one side. Let's look at one more example today. Oops. Okay. It says Sammy goes for a walk every morning. If it takes her 60 minutes to complete her walk at a speed of 3 miles per hour, how long would it take for her to complete her walk at a speed of 4 miles per hour? Okay, so remember, first step, we just totally treat it like normal and set up the proportion. So first it takes her 60 minutes. Okay. And 60 minutes, that's if she's going at 3 miles per hour. So the 60 goes with the 3 miles per hour, so you got to keep them across from each other. Remember, we don't want to put the 3 here because then we'd have minutes with miles per hour that can get confusing for us. We want to keep minutes with minutes. We want to put miles per hour with miles per hour. Okay. And then it says, how long would it take for her to complete a walk at a speed of 4 miles per hour? So there it is, 4 miles per hour. How many minutes? We don't know. And that's what our proportion looks like at first. Now we ask ourselves, is it direct or indirect? Okay. Well, think about it. First, she's going at this speed, and it takes her this long. If she increases her speed to 4 miles per hour, is that going to take more time? So if she walks faster, will it take longer? Or if she walks faster, will it take less time? Well, it makes sense that if she walks faster, it's going to take her less time, right? So what we have is an inverse or indirect proportion. And that means we've got to take one side and do the reciprocal of it. We've got to flip it. Okay, so let's just take this side, the 3 and the 4. We're going to flip them. We'll put four on top, three on bottom, and then we'll go ahead and solve. Cross multiply, three times 60, mental math, we've got that's 180. And then we've got 180 divided by four. And there's our answer, it's gonna take 45 minutes. And that is how inverse proportions work. Set up a normal proportion, flip one side, cross multiply and solve. All there is to it. We'll practice it tomorrow. Don't forget to answer the questions in the description of this video. And we'll see you tomorrow.